So for today's little chat, we are going to talk about my embarrassing and very long non-traditional journey to being a doctor. I was an English major. I graduated from undergraduate school in five years, not four. I then went to do a master's. I then took two years off, two gap years, and then I got into medical school. So that's at least four ways of non-traditional. Just to kind of cover what non-traditional means or traditional means for people that don't know. If someone does not take the expected route to medical school, then they are considered non-traditional. Now the expected route includes graduating from high school and the same year you graduate from high school, you immediately start a four year undergraduate program. You have to major in a science like biology, chemistry. After that, the same year that you graduate from undergraduate school with your science degree, you begin medical school. Now you can imagine all the reasons why someone would not be traditional. Maybe they didn't go to undergrad for four years, they went for six years because they had to go part-time sometimes, or maybe someone failed an entire class and had to repeat the whole thing and that extended their schooling. Some of you are probably nervous about applying to medical school because you feel like you are non-traditional and that the schools are going to look down on you. And that is a valid fear. I actually was really scared myself applying to medical school the two times, the three times that I did, actually three times. <laughs> I am very non-traditional. I didn't even take a path less trodden. I took a path untrodden. The path I took didn't exist. I was walking down the, you know, the road of life and I just saw a forest and just started with blind confidence charging through the forest. I got lost several times. <laughs> I know I said earlier that this path was embarrassing, but actually it's not. It was embarrassing for me when I was first applying to medical school, but over time I've learned not to be embarrassed. In medical school, almost everybody is non-traditional. There are so many non-traditional students in medical school. It's very common. It's super, super common. I did it twice. <laughs> I got into medical school twice, being non-traditional both times. I am now a doctor and honestly, it didn't hold me back. I love my non-traditional misadventures. They're not even misadventures. They're amazing ventures. I had so much fun. I learned so much. And I think all the things I did set me up to be a better doctor. I'm certainly a better person. I would not be who I am if I didn't do those things. Without further ado, let's discuss how I am non-traditional. So when I graduated high school, I didn't quite know what I wanted to be. And then I decided I wanted to be a writer. So I went into undergraduate school as an English major. Now at some point along the way, I decided to become a doctor. And in order to become a doctor, you have to take your prerequisite courses, biology courses, chemistry courses. And my advisor told me that I had the option to actually change my major from English to biology because by that point I had a lot of biology credits. I decided on purpose with intention to stay an English major. <laughs> People told me that being a non-science major was not good for applying to medical school. They told me that it was gonna make me less competitive, but I felt in my heart that going to college and learning a skill like writing, learning a skill like communication, learning a skill in the liberal arts was only gonna help me become a better doctor because I knew that doctors are not one dimensional. Doctors do not just go into a lab and do some science and then give someone some pills, you know? Doctors talk to people, doctors have to have a communication, doctors have to educate. And so I felt that being an English major was gonna make me a better doctor. So I kept the English major. Now that is the first thing I did that makes me non-traditional. In undergraduate school, I decided to create my own minor. I joined an academic program and this program allows students to pick and choose whatever classes they want to fit a minor of whatever they want. I created a minor called Race, Class, and Health and again, I felt that this education was going to make me a better doctor. My minor was all about how all the elements of race, like culture, ethnicity, contributes to healthcare and how that contributes to people's health and their understanding of health and their willingness to get healthcare and things like that. The drawback of creating my own minor was that I would have to go to school longer. So instead of four years, I would graduate in five years. Again, I really felt like this was an awesome decision, even though it made me non-traditional because I'm now graduating in five years instead of four, it was extra knowledge. And it was extra knowledge about the healthcare system. It's gonna make me better, right? I got my minor in race, class, and health and my major degree in English. 
So the first time I applied to medical school, I was already non-traditional. I applied so that I would start immediately after undergraduate school. The problem is that I wasn't sure if I wanted to do a master's degree first. At the tail end of my undergraduate years, I just was beginning to learn what public health was. Studying something like race, class, and health, you could see that I was really interested in how healthcare behaviors affect public health looking at populations instead of single patients and doing research in that area. I was really interested in that and I didn't know what it was till my senior year in college. So I was really kind of confused. Like, do I want to be, you know, just a doctor that works in the clinic or do I want to be a doctor that does research for populations? Do I want to be a doctor that works for an organization like the CDC? To explore that, I had some backup plans for medical school. I applied to lots of master's programs and post-baccalaureate programs in the event that I didn't get accepted to medical school I could go learn about public health. I got accepted to an awesome master's program and I got accepted to medical school. So I didn't know what to do and in classic joy fashion, I decided to try to do it all. I tried to defer my medical school admission so that I could do a master's first and then go to medical school. Unfortunately, the school did not allow me to defer. I thought I made a really good case about how it was gonna make me a better doctor to learn public health but they disagreed, <laughs> so, well maybe they didn't disagree, but they didn't allow deferments. They didn't wanna take a risk that I wasn't gonna go or something, I'm not sure, but anyhow. Another reason I really wanted to do a master's that had nothing to do with academics was that I wanted more exposure to what being a doctor was like. I don't come from a family of doctors, I don't come from a family in healthcare. I never went to the doctor as a kid, like our family just didn't go to the doctor. So I had no experience really in that role. This university that had the master's program also had a medical school and they were linked. I mean, they were overlapping. You know, you would have classes with medical students. If you lived in the dorms, you lived, you know, your roommate could be uh, a medical student. And your professors of your public health classes were also professors at the medical school. So there was a lot of overlap and I love that. I really wanted to see what it was like being a medical student. I wanted to learn more about the profession of being a doctor and I just wanted more Knowledge. I just always felt that I was lacking in knowledge about medicine because of my background. At the end of the day, I chose to not go to medical school after I was given an acceptance, and instead I went to do a master's in health science. So I got my master's experience. That was all great. I'm really non traditional at this point. <laughs> I decided to apply immediately to medical school after master's. The problem was I only could afford to apply to five schools. If you know graduate school, you know that that was the poorest time of my life. <laughs> Any graduate student is hurting for money. It's horrible. Um, I was poor, so I couldn't afford to apply to a lot of medical schools. When you're applying to medical school, you know, most people recommend that you apply to like 30 schools or more. I only applied to five. I think that my only applying to five contributed to me not getting in that year. Now, I did get interviews and I actually was interviewed at my dream school, which was awesome. So I know I was a competitive applicant. I just couldn't afford to apply to enough schools to get in at the end of the day. Back to the drawing board, I decided to take a year off to earn money so I could then apply to lots and lots of schools. During my year off, I used my master's degree to get a job working um, for a nonprofit organization. And we educated people about the Affordable Care Act you know, we had some funding from the government. It was really cool. I was in charge of a team. And so that team was responsible for educating. It was really fun. We did public health rallies. It, it was just, it was a good time. I also worked at a psychiatric hospital so I could keep doing clinical things. I learned a whole lot about that side of medicine. I worked directly with nurses and psychiatrists. It was really hard. I mean, what made it fun was the people that I worked with, um, but it was a very tough job. At some point, I was working two full-time jobs, and then I added a part-time job just, just to make sure. Applying to medical school is crazy expensive, upwards of tens of thousands of dollars. Those of you who have virtual interviews this year are lucky because it is really expensive to go to interviews all over the country. So after saving up money for another year, so this is now the second gap year because it takes a whole year to apply to medical school, so the first year I didn't get in, the second year I'm trying to earn money, I applied to medical school the final time. I applied to 30 plus schools, you know, I got lots of interviews and I um, got into my number one choice, which was awesome. So that ends my non-traditional journey. 
and I did not even touch on my academic record because <laughs> I definitely have imperfect academics. One of which is the number of times I had to take the MCAT. I took the MCAT five times, five times. And it's not because I failed it. Actually, all of those times I took the MCAT, I passed, which is crazy. I feel like that's a whole nother topic for another video. <laughs> but the admissions committee saw that. They saw that I took the MCAT five times. And another thing that probably makes me not traditional is that I am in the military. And while I'm not applying to medical school anymore, you know, I still had to apply to residency. And when you apply to residency, things like being in the military can make you stand out. All that to say, I had a lot of non-traditional things and I still got in. So if you're worried because you're non-traditional, just know that it's still possible for you to get in. You should also know that schools are changing. There are thousands of applications for a single spot into medical school. Those schools are burdened with having to sift through thousands of applications. They don't have infinite number of employees to do this. So to make it easier, they take some shortcuts like looking at board scores and saying, okay, if your MCAT is below this, we're not even gonna look at your application. But a lot of schools have formulas and algorithms like that. The other thing is the traditional and non-traditional status. So if you're non-traditional, they might say, okay, you're non-traditional, but you have to have a higher score for us to look at it. Or they might say, oh, you're non-traditional. We're not even gonna look at those. Some schools do that. And I think in the past, it was a lot more rampant, but things are changing. So there's a big push to get more diversity in medicine. Schools are realizing that by only allowing entrance of traditional students, they are inadvertently reducing the number of minority uh, medical students. And this is because being a minority for lots of reasons is linked to income. Lots of minority students don't have as high of an income as their white peers. And so having to earn that money to afford to apply to medical school can cause somebody to have a non-traditional path. That's what happened to me. You know, I had two gap years because I couldn't afford to apply to enough medical schools to get in. A lot of people can't do school full time because they have to have a job. And so that causes their undergraduate years to extend. Schools are recognizing that traditional versus non-traditional does not have as much utility as they thought. There are studies coming out showing that things like your board scores, things like your gap years are not affecting how good of a doctor you are. Your patients are not gonna sit there and ask you what you did during the year that you had between high school and college. They're not gonna ask you what your major was in undergraduate school. It's not gonna matter to them because it doesn't matter to your ability to care for patients. And schools are acknowledging that more and more. There are lots of smart people on the admissions committees and they know the system is messed up. They know the admissions process is ridiculous and they are just waiting and waiting for a non-traditional student to come in and convince them to let them in the school. They would love to give you a chance. They just need to hear it. They need to hear how all of your non-traditional experiences can make you into a better doctor. And at the end of the day, that's the challenge. The challenge is to look at all of your non-traditional things and with each one, explain how that makes you a better person and a better doctor. Explain how that sets you apart from the stack of traditional students and why they should then let you in their school your whole application should be geared towards showing them that. If you have a really good personal statement that addresses the non-traditional status head on and talks about the positive things, then when you get an interview, that's really your time to shine. And you better believe they're gonna ask you all those questions about why you're non-traditional. <laughs> I got so many questions about why did you take a gap year? And I got questions about, you took the MCAT five times, so what's going on, what's wrong with you? <laughs> and I got um, questions about why are you an English major, you know? All of these things did come up, but again, there are people on the admissions committees who want non-traditional students. And actually, there are whole schools that want non-traditional students. There are schools whose whole mission is to increase the number of minority students in the United States. Those schools are the ones that are looking for non-traditional students. So maybe you won't get into a certain school because they're still doing things the traditional way. But ask yourself this, do you really want to go to a school that's like that? Do you really want to go to a school that's not evolving, that's not changing? It's something to think about. Apply broadly, don't beat yourself up, and be proud of your non-traditional status. I hope you enjoyed this little chat, 
and I will share with you guys why I took the MCAT five times in another video, I promise.